On today's episode, we have Eric Klein. Eric is the Director of Sports Performance for New Mexico State University, where he works with football. Um, I, I love this conversation. I think Eric was very con- candid uh, in his responses, very open and honest. And you can tell from this conversation that he was, uh, you know, he's very invested in developing the field, developing interns, developing the coaches that he works with and the athletes that he works with, which I think is kind of the whole job. Um, you know, we speak about things like passion, we, you know, we kind of cover the whole spectrum. And I really, really enjoyed the conversation. Probably one of my favorites since I've become the host. So, you know, we've had so many great guests, it's tough to pick favorites, but, you know, it's just a, it was a really refreshing conversation for me, um, kind of got me energized for the day. So I hope that can do the same for you. Um, as always, thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy. What's going on, collective listeners? On today's episode, we have Eric Klein. He's the director of sports performance at New Mexico State University. Eric, thank you so much for coming on. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely, man. It's, it's it's an honor. You know, when I texted you, you said it was an honor to be on here, and it's an honor to have you on. So, uh, I'm very excited for it. I'm excited. You know, I, it's not every day that you get an opportunity to speak to people and, and kind of put who you are out there for uh, people to kind of learn from and, and find out who you are and what you do. I think that's the most important thing of it, right? Is you get to actually uh, communicate. And then what I love hearing about is uh, when get, when our guests come on and then we have listeners reach out to them, ask them about certain things that they specifically brought up within the podcast, and then they kind of develop a relationship from there. So uh, ho- hopefully that continues, especially yeah. if, if uh, that's what you're excited about. So, well, yeah. uh, could you kind of just give us a quick intro uh, to you and then your background and then what brought you to New Mexico State? Okay, so uh, I'll start kind of recent history and work backwards. So I'm starting into my um, third third off season here at New Mexico State. I I came here uh, when there was a football head football coach change. Jerry Kill uh, took over the program and um, he and I had not been working most recently together, but I had, I have worked with Jerry uh, since uh, 1995. Um, so we had a long history together, even though as of most recently, we hadn't worked to, together. Uh, here I am the director of sports performance. So I oversee all of our teams that train athletically. Um, I am though directly responsible for the development of our football, of our football team. Uh, we have a staff of four full-time strength coaches, two part-time strength coaches. Uh, and then we bring in interns, you know, New Mexico state university has a great, um, kinesiology, you know, department. So anybody that's interested in wanting to, uh, get into this field, we try and help, uh, as best as we can. I think that's something that's been important for me in my career, uh, of helping individuals that are interested in strength and conditioning, you know, you go to school and you hear about it or whatever. And then it's like, is this something I really want to, you know, chase as a profession. And I, I think, um, we have an opportunity opportunities here to, to help people if that's what, you know, if that's what they want to do. And, and, but, uh, along my career, you know, I, I've took a non-traditional route to where I am. Um, like I said, I started coaching in, in 95, uh, when I was first hired, I was 22 years old. I was going to, uh, I was going to Saginaw Valley state, which is a division two school to work with Jerry kill. I was going to coach, um, defensive line. I was going to coach the throwers on the track team. And then I was going to do anything else that needed to be done. When you're a small school, you do whatever it is, you know, to make ends meet, um, along the way there, you know, first, first of all was, you know, you get done with your, with your season as a football coach, and then you're supposed to go out on the road and start recruiting. Well, I went from the football season right into the track season. And so with that, I couldn't go out on the road. So I became a coach in the weight room. We had a guy that was in charge of the weight room. I became a coach in the weight room, uh, working with, you know, football in our off in their off season and coaching, coaching the throwers. I, I did a little bit more than throwers. I, I helped out in the field events, but, uh, long story short, um, after a few years of, of doing that, you know, and then 
other sport coaches because, you know, small school, 1995, strength, strength coaches weren't out there like we are today. So all of a sudden I start getting questions from the volleyball coach. I get questions from the basketball coach. You know, I'm now I'm, you know, and then I'm working with the sprinters in the weight room and I'm, you know, I'm, so I, I started branching out and I said, you know what? I like that. I like coaching. I like working with athletes. I like it more than being a position coach. You know, if you think of all the things that sport coaches have to do, coaching probably makes up 10 to 15 percent of their of their time, right? Yearly time. And so, you know, that was kind of a little bit of a turnoff for me. And and, uh, being a strength coach was really what I wanted to do. So I went back and I started studying to be to get my CSCS certification and uh, was fortunate enough to pass, you know, on the on the first try. <laughs> and so then, you know, and, and then I said, you know what? I, and I told Coach Kill this. I said, Coach, you know, I really uh, I really want to be a strength coach. You know, I love the game of football. It's given me a lot in life, but I think I will have more effect on athletes and and I will be a happier person if I go into strength and conditioning and the kind of person that he is, he was like, oh, okay, great. What do I got to do to help you? And um, I kind of explained to him and he's like, well, you know, I'll help you. I'll help you in any way I can. And I was like, well, I may have to go GA someplace. You know, I don't know what it's going to take for me to go from, from where I was at. You know, I was three or four years into being a, position coach and doing what I was. And I said, I don't know if I have to go be a GA or whatever. Well, what ended up happening was we changed jobs, moved to a different school, went to Emporia State, kind of took over more of the strength and conditioning there, started helping some more programs, was there for a couple of years, go to Southern Illinois University, Now we're moving up, you know, one double A FCS program, one double A at that time. I tell, I work one season as a dual role, dual role, defensive line, strength coach, and then became, took over as the university head strength coach. And then I've never looked back, always been a head strength coach from there. Uh, from Southern Illinois to Northern Illinois, from Northern Illinois to the University of Minnesota, where at, now at the University of Minnesota, I was the head strength coach for football only, uh, you know, removed the title of the department, you know, and just was fortunate enough to work with just football at the University of Minnesota, at the University of Connecticut, uh, work with just football there for a couple of years. And then Um, I took a step back thinking, okay, you know what? I've got a family. We're moving across. We've, we're zigzagging across the country. Want to settle down, found a job that was, it was a really good place. Uh, Christian brothers high school in Memphis, Tennessee, that they were willing to take a chance on a guy that was, you know, here's a guy that's got all this college experience, no high school experience. And, and they were looking for a strength coach and they took a chance on me and, had three years there that was that were really good uh, working at the high school level, you know what, which made me a better strength coach, you know, made me a better coach overall having to communicate with with that younger population and and, you know, teaching, uh, you know, those, that age group what it is to transition from, you know, now it was an all boys school. But, you know, transitioning from their freshman year, you know, coming out of eighth grade, becoming a senior in high school, uh, you know, watching them mature and grow and, and, you know, being somebody that's had experience in the college level for those guys that had the interest in going to collegiate, you know, sports, you know, I could, I could help them there. And, and just, it was a really good time uh, for me. And then, you know, left there when I heard Coach Kill was coming here hopped on with them and and now here I sit. Well, it's it's funny that you mentioned that. I don't know if you know this, we actually just interviewed the current strength coach, 
uh, for Christian. Yeah, Brothers High no, School. I saw, yeah. I, I, no, I saw, I saw that. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Cody's awesome, but he spoke about uh, the legacy that other strength coaches have left behind, right? And, yeah. and actually, uh, the ability to have a high quality strength program. So it's a, it's a great connection right there. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is. You know, so there's a lot that I want to dig into there because I think you said a lot that kind of uh, piques my interest in different areas. Okay. Kind of the biggest thing that, you know, you, you mentioned is coming back to New Mexico State uh, to work with your head coach again. Right. You know, I've, I've noticed this trend. It's particularly within football. It starts to become a little bit more within basketball now uh, where coaches will kind of link up with the head coach, right? And they may even part ways for a few years and then get back together at a, a new position. It actually just happened with um, Craig Fitzgerald, uh, left the New York Giants, uh, and then right. went back to go with Bill O'Brien at Boston College. Um, right. What goes into that? initial relationship building with the coach and then, you know, how do you maintain those relationships and, and get those opportunities in the future uh, to go back and work for those coaches again? Well, I think, you know, I think initially it, uh, it's like, like any relationship that you have. Right. So when I first started working with coach kill, you know, there is, there is that kind of testing out period of, you know, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. You know, I, I was, like I said, because I was coming at it from a different perspective. I was not a traditional strength coach to start. You know, I was a position coach working in the weight room. And so um, there were growing pains, obviously, from my standpoint of learning the, the profession of strength and conditioning, right? I mean, what – Everybody from the outside, you look at it and it's like, well, you just got to make guys bigger, faster, stronger, get them in good shape, right? Well, as you and I know, there's way more to that than just those simple terms. But I think some, I think football coaches, and it, they're getting better nowadays, they see it in those per, in, the, in those terms. So as I, as I was developing my philosophy, I was having to educate Coach Kill as to, hey, you know, you're traditionally looking at, you know, hey, you want big squats, you want big benches, you want big this, you know, and those are things are great. But I'm also looking at, you know, can a guy play game one to game 12? You know, when, when you're in, in, in the FCS level and you have playoffs, you know, your your season can get extended beyond the original, the original number. And then it becomes – really important of, you know, our guys available. So, you know, we, so there was that give and take, and I, I know there was frustrations on both sides. Hey, it's like me meeting my wife, right? You know, it's, it's Hey, I'm, I'm going to court you and we're going to date and I'm going to put my best foot forward. But at some point in time, we're both going to be kind of ugly <laughs> with, the, with each other. Um, you know, cause we're, because you're trying to figure, you're trying to figure out what, you know, what works best for us. And, and so there's, so that trust, that trust builds, you know, the trust builds between the two of us. And so then, you know, I get to understand what his expectations are on the football field. And he, and then I, you know, obviously, you know, the expectations in the weight room, but then you start to, you know, you learn the expectations of what is he looking for, on the on the field right in the game on the on the practice field and so then he starts to then so then you know the head coach coach kill in this case he starts to see that okay i can create i can get a guy to a level that has him prepared to physically perform and mentally be ready to take that first practice, right. Or whatever, it, whatever it is. Okay. But then obviously the football, you have to mold them. You know, we do all this work in the off season, but really that pre, you know, two day camp, preseason camp, whatever you get, I had to actually get them ready for football. Right. And I think um, early on we had coach Gill and I had those conversations. I will get them to a point for two days or, you know, at, at first we were at two days, right. Now you got just, you know, you have your single practices and things have changed, but, you know, so guys will be physically ready for that. 
Now you, as a head football coach, you take them the rest of the way to get them ready for the game. And I think that relationship, that trust, we build that. And then so when a head coach goes to take over a program, he, you know, obviously he wants to have people around that he's comfortable with, you know, and I think for, for at least he and I, my relationship, you know, we went back for a long time. And when we were, we started, well, when we, when we started at Southern Illinois, there was a staff that was built at Southern Illinois. Well, all of those guys traveled from Southern to Northern, from Northern to the University of Minnesota. And, and it, it made each one of those stops better because there was a continuity of understanding of, of what each other's roles were. The trust was, where do I fit in? Where, you know, what, what is my piece of the puzzle? And I think that's important when you, when you look at building programs or, you know, or rebuilding programs or whatever, whatever that as a staff, everybody, there's a trust they, they know how things fit together and that you can, that you're not going to step on somebody's toes because, Hey, this is what, this is my role. It's not really your role or, you know, what have you. No, I think that that makes, you know, complete sense to me as I try to observe other staffs, right. And uh, my own staff that I work for here uh, and see what are the things that, help us to be successful. Right. And, and right. I think exactly what you said, clearly defined roles uh, and, and the ability to trust in one another. Um, so yeah. I'm sure across all those years that trust does have to be developed. Right. And yep. I, I came here, you know, with our men's staff in particular, they were together for five years. Uh, and then I came in and, I, you know, I'm the new strength coach. And so right. uh, you could tell that there was definitely a trust that had to be built up. But uh, if, if you can get in that position where they can trust you, you know, it was, it was exciting for them because, uh, you know, I, I had the benefit also that our previous uh, strength coach was the director of Olympic strength and conditioning. And now this is just a basketball position. So I'm able to be here more and do more things and run more mobility sessions and things that they like to see. Right. But um, you can see that, when that trust is, you know, uh, communicated across it, does, I don't know if you feel the same way, but it feels to me also like um, if questions are asked, it's not in a way to uh, kind of make a dig at what you're doing or, uh, you know, uh, criticizing. It's really just to understand so that they can uh, create the same message across the team uh, and, and deliver that same message. Have you seen that as well? I've, I've seen that as well. And, you know, I think, um, well, right now we're going through, we're going through a staff change here. So I, you know, I stayed consistent. Our coach, our coach Kill stepped down and now we have Tony Sanchez as our, as our head coach. And, and Tony was on staff before. So he had a chance to see uh, what I've done, you know, what I did previously before he got here. So there, you know, there was, there is some trust built there already. Uh, but again, you're right. I mean, he's going to ask questions of me because he wasn't in that conversation as the wide receivers coach before, whereas now he's the now he's the head coach, and it be, you know, and it's it's an understand it's an understanding uh, thing, right? It's it's I'm his voice when he's not at a workout, right? And so we we both want to speak the right, or for me, I want to speak the language that he has, just to, and so that I become the right voice for him and and in the off season. Well, you know, it's exactly like you just met, uh, sorry, the message you just got across, right? Um, when we're in the off season, we're going to be the ones who see the athletes the most really, because right. they'll be the coaches, head coaches will be out recruiting. Um, you know, a, a lot of time, the four hours is split four and four, uh, you know, in the off season, uh, four hours are going to be spent with me straight, just pure strength and conditioning. And then the other four hours are going to be spent with position coaches, potentially on some film, and then maybe one team practice in our, uh, you know, how we break it down here, you know, so a lot of the time it's going to be more time spent with me as the strength coach. So it is, a, it, it's crucial to make sure that you're getting across the same language, the same message that your head coach is looking for. Right. Yeah. Yes. I, I think that, I think that's the, the key nowadays. Yeah. And so 
you know, at, at the time at Minnesota, was that a decision for you to leave to separate from the staff, uh, or was now that so uh, so coach so coach Kill has um, epilepsy, and at, at that time it, it became kind of unmanageable. So he he had to step down for for health reasons, and so new athletic director. Head coach steps down. I get one. We had one season uh, with a pre with another head coach that was actually our defensive coordinator. They elevated to head coach, and then uh, basically we all got fired and had to had to move on. Mm. You know, I asked because I'm just curious about that break in time as well, too, you know, where you did separate, but now you were able to have a good relationship with the coach and then come back and work for him in New Mexico again. Right. So the, the funny thing about, about, about here, so, you know, coach Kale stepped down for his health and he was out of the, he was out of the game for a little bit and then kind of worked his way back in as, you know, an analyst and, you know, he was advising and, you know, tried, tried to do some stuff while well, he w- he took over at, at TCU when Gary Patterson stepped down. And so he was the interim there and, you know, he gets announced as the head coach here at New Mexico State after the season. I think it was the um, – what was that, the 21, 20 season, 21 season. Um, and so <laughs> I just I just call him to congratulate him. Hey, you know, you know, hey, coach, you know, congratulations. I saw your – you're going to be the next head coach in New Mexico State. I think that's awesome. I'm, I'm great to hear that. And I just kind of said, hey, you know what? Just remember, I'm your guy. And that's what I just said. I just, that's just, that's all I said, right? And he goes, what? You, what? What are you, what are you, what are you? Hey, I'm getting on a plane right now to go to Mexico State. So, <laughs> so that's how I got my way back. That's how I got my way in here. <laughs> But, you know, I think a lot of the coaches listening to this podcast as well can kind of identify with that, right? There's people who you'll always want to work with. And, you know, if you know you have that opportunity again, I know there's certain coaches who, um, you know, not sport coaches necessarily, but uh, strength and conditioning coaches, if I had the opportunity to work with them again, it'd be really hard to say no to that because of how great of a relationship we built outside of the weight room and outside of the actual athletic department. Right, yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you mentioned your wife a little bit earlier. How long have y'all been together? Um, so we've been together 20 some odd years. Wow. Um, yeah. Now I guess it's going to be 24. We started dating in 1999. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Well, that's, that's incredible. A long time. She's, she's, you know, she is absolute awesome woman. Um, uh, we have two daughters. Uh, she she works as well, and so you know she is she is the true super mom. I mean, she's carting kids around to athletic events and doing all that, and then working as well. And and you know she's my biggest supporter, and uh, just awesome to have somebody like her in my corner. I mean, you know, that's, that stuff is so special, and I, I'm very fortunate to kind of experience that on my end, too. Unfor- you know, n- no kids at the moment. We just have two dogs, so she's really good <laughs> <laughs> about making sure the dogs get taken out. We have a doubleheader today, so she's uh, stopping in in between the games. But, uh, but you know, I know exactly what that support feels like. Y- you know, I guess uh, selfishly, I'm curious about this myself. Like, you mentioned going to Christian Brothers High School in Tennessee uh, for that opportunity to settle down for a little bit and, you know, to not necessarily move or have so much change within your family life. You know, what were kind of the key things that went into that decision, you know, and, and do you feel like it was it was a beneficial decision for your personal life? Um, well, so the, the keys, one of the main decisions was, so I have I have two daughters, like I mentioned, the oldest one is 14. And I think at the time when we were looking, when I was considering going into the, into Christian brothers, going into high school, I was really considering going into high school. Cause I think at the time she was eight, maybe eight or nine years old. And she had lived in six different homes at the time. And it was like, you know what? 
that's a little bit, that's a little bit much, you know? And so, um, it's like, I want to find, I want to find some place where maybe we can have a longer tenure, you know, and it, you know, and, and not everybody has to move all the time, like, like we did, but it was just, that was the nature. That was the nature of the ride that we were on. And so that, that was the case. And so I looked at, you know, I looked at, at what it, you know, what high schools were take were serious about their strength and conditioning. And it just so happened that a um, friend of mine knew a guy at this, at Christian brothers. And so I was able to kind of get a contact to get a, to get a foot in the door. And um, I hounded them. I, I really, I really hounded, I hounded the high school and finally the, the head coach for the high, for the football team there was like, Hey, are you really serious? I mean, look at your resume. You're, you, you've coached in the big 10, you know, why do you want to come here? And I, I told him, I said, this is, I, I want to settle down. I want, you know, I want to, I want to, it's not a, it's not a slower life. I, if, if, you know, I, I'll give a ton of credit to all the high school strength coaches uh, out there. And I've, you know, I've had a chance to meet a lot of them uh, and, and talk to them at, at national conventions and stuff. It's not, it's not an easy, that's not an easy gig, you know? Um, but the stability of it, it was great. It, that situation was perfect for me. Um, being an all boys school, I had gone to an all boys Jesuit high school, uh, for two years growing up. So I was, I was familiar with kind of the, the setup, but then just being able to, you know, help. And I, and I think for me, you know, the vocation of helping people develop and achieve, um, that was, that was part of, the big decision there is, you know, I can do that there. You know, that's one of the things I think calls me to basketball a little bit um, is because of the specific relationships that you can build just because of the pure number of athletes. You know, you're down to 15 here um, where you can really develop really, really strong relationships. Not to say they can't be done in football, but um, I, I just remember with my time in football, I think you can develop great relationships, but you know, from it's not consistent across who you see every day, unless it's a specific position group. Um, you know, here it's, I, I see these 15 guys every single day um, and I can develop that relationship with them. Right. Uh, but you know, it's even funny you bring this up a lot of, a lot of reflections. I feel like I can see uh, from my own life. I went to a Jesuit high school as well. Uh, Christian Brothers yeah. Academy up in upstate New York. Uh, but you know, we were, uh, the listeners know this, but my fiance is the director of performance nutrition here. Uh, and so she was at Texas tech with me. Uh, we met at Tennessee and, and I remember we have to give a fun fact as a staff development, right. Or, uh, in the staff meetings. And so she's a new staff. She goes up to give her fun fact. And she's like, yeah, I've lived in uh, five States in the past four years. And I was <laughs> like, that's definitely because of me, you know, yeah, right, uh, and, right. and my mom was, a she was a high achiever within the nursing field. So, you know, you know, like you mentioned with your daughter, I, I had moved, I'd been in six houses in five years, similar setup, uh, you know, and, and that was just kind of my life. It didn't really, uh, it didn't seem different to me, but then I remember, you know, my fiance has lived in one house her entire life. The first time she moved was to go to college. And so, uh, I think when you do talk about that support from a significant other or somebody that you can have, like you can show it really means a lot to them. And when we were talking about moving out to Appalachian state, you know, it was, she just moved to Texas not six months ago and now we're going to move all the way to North Carolina. And it's like, man, like I, I felt almost nervous to bring it up, but you know, I had somebody to support me and that really, really made uh, the decision much easier for me and, and has made the uh, transition and becoming coming into this position much, much easier. Yeah. yeah. No, I, it, you can't do it if you don't have strong support. Absolutely. I mean, and, and it, it's a similar theme I've seen with people who have been in the coaching field as long as you have as well. Um, is typically there's somebody who is that really that kind of rock for them and, and that really stable support. Um, 
you mentioned the development uh, in, in that piece that you really enjoy about, about strength and conditioning. I think that's what a lot of coaches can identify with. I certainly do as well. Um, and, you know, even if it's something as simple as seeing somebody, you know, add 10 pounds to a bench press is exciting because you see them uh, put the work in and then and get a better result. You know, what were the kind of the things in the high school that you said made you a better coach and, and allowed you to develop those athletes? You know, what were, what were the main things that stuck out to you from your time in the high school field? Well, you know, I think um, having to slow things down um, and kind of rethink how I, my progressions, you know, in teaching, you know, when you get a freshman and when you get a freshman in college, you know, whether that kid lifted in high school or he was a two or three star athlete, you know, and he got in the weight room every once in a while, they, for the most part, understand their body and they, whether they're strong or not strong, there is some physical awareness of who they are and what they can do. And right. And, but when you take a high school, when you're in the high school and you have that eighth grader that's transitioning into his freshman year, man, some of those guys can't walk and chew gum at the same time. You know, they, they, you know, they didn't know the difference, but you know, you say pick up the barbell and they're walking over the dumbbell rack, you know, I mean, you know, you have, you have that disparity. And so then it, it, it became, you know, I need to do a better job of how I communicate with people so that they understand what they need to do and they feel good about what they're doing. You know, um, I'm not a, you know, by personality, I'm not a yeller. Um, and I, you know, I've been known to have a loud voice, but I'm not, you know, I don't yell at people. I encourage, I encourage a lot. Um, and so having that, having somebody like me that can encourage them to step out of their comfort zone. And, you know, that's, I think that's what weight training is all about, right? Is I'm going to push my comfort zone today and whatever it is, right? I'm, we're doing bench press or we're doing squat or we're out on the field and we're running, we're, run, we're trying to run fast or we're trying to get in condition. I want to push my comfort zone and oh, by the way, there's this guy over there that keeps telling me I can do it. You know, that I think that's great, you know. And so j just being able to work with those guys and and encouraging them and teaching them that it's OK to get out and try something, you know, try something different. Yeah. OK, so what? You suck at this right now. If we keep practicing it and you keep working at it, you're going to get better. You know, yeah, you may not be, you may not end up being as strong as the guy on the rack next to you, but you're as strong as you can physically be. And that's all that matters, you know, and just working with, just working with them and, and, you know, refining what they were able to do, how I, how I did it. And then, you know, coming into college, it's like now, you know, when I talk to my staff, it's like, hey, make sure you explain, you know, don't be in a hurry, right? Because you only get one time to explain it. You only They only have one time to really see that you understand that they understand that they don't understand, you know, and I think that's important. Well, what's so interesting to me about that piece that you just mentioned with taking people out of their comfort zone and and the difference between a freshman in college and a freshman in high school, you know, college athletics is reserved for a very select few people, but high school was for everybody, right? I mean, right. almost everybody gets a high school education. So if somebody's fortunate enough to go to a program with a strength and conditioning program, they may not end up becoming a college athlete, but the experience that you've given them and then the ability to push past their comfort zone and, and, and actually, you know, improve and develop, I think is, is a lifelong skill that you can uh, impart upon younger people who really wouldn't get that experience, um, you know, because they probably wouldn't have the ability to go to college athletics. Right. And I think, you know, and 
it's it's interesting. I you know now I'm like I said I'm I've been removed from from the high school for a few years. Is I've actually had some of the former students just reach out and said, "Hey, you know what? I really appreciate." the time that you took to work with me on that, you know, I wasn't in a good spot or I, you know, I've had, I've had those letters or emails that have come through that said, hey, just the fact that you helped me do something I didn't think I could do has meant the world to me. Well, I mean, it's like, it, it, it does become life-changing for some people, you know, it does. Um, really that does. process really is, I mean, obviously it was for me as a high school student because you know, we, I always joke all the time. I'm probably the worst basketball player on the continent. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm clearly not here for my basketball skills, but I developed a love for the weight room because there were older students. And then there were also, uh, you know, coaches who showed me the weight room and it, it changed my life because now I'm a strength and conditioning coach because I love the process of improving and getting better. Um, and so I think that's one of the coolest aspects of high school strength and conditioning that I think uh, sometimes does not get mentioned as much. Right. One of the other pieces of development that you spoke about was with potential interns, people who are interested within the field um, and, and looking to kind of expand their horizons within strength and conditioning. What are kind of the key things that you look for in development of those interns? And then, um, you know, how do you kind of try to uh, not only develop, but in spur the love for strength and conditioning inside those interns? Uh, you know, I think, um, one, you know, I think we're looking at um, anybody, you know, people look at strength and conditioning and they they kind of have some ideas on, well, you know, it's, it's working out, right? It's just working people out. Um, but it's, it's really not right. It's, it's relationships. And as long as we get somebody that can come in, that can, can, can communicate and work with people, I think we can coach you up to be anything, right? It's like me when I was when I was in college and I was transitioning from being a, you know, graduating college into trying to find the profession I fit. I was a bartender. I had other than drinking, <laughs> I didn't know anything else about being a bartender, but I went in and I applied for the job and the guy goes, hey, that's okay. It doesn't matter. I'll teach you everything you need to know about mixing drinks, you know? And that's, that's kind of the same thing here. You know, as long you, you may like to work out and that, that's great. And you have a, gen, you have a general understanding. We'll teach you, you know, progressions and we'll teach you that stuff, but you better have a passion, you know, and, and passion is a tough word. It's a word that gets thrown around a lot because, you know, cause oh, I got a passion for this. Are you really, do you really, because if you have a passion, you're giving something up to get to something else, you know, and, and we talk about my wife, it's not always been a, it's not always been a smooth ride, you know, because, and you know, this, you're not home, right? You're, you're not there. Something came up and all of a sudden you got to be in the weight room for this. You know, I had basketball when I was at Southern Illinois, you know, I had, I had basketball. Oh, Hey, you know what? We want to have a uh, eight o'clock, you know, quick workout before we get on the bus, then we're heading, you know, somewhere, you know, and it's like, Oh, Hey, I got to go, you know? Um, so, you know, finding the, finding the people that are, that are willing to do that. And then, Hey, we can teach you what you want to know. And you, and I, and I tell them the ones that, that are truly serious, you know, strength, being a strength coach is like being a carpenter. Okay. Carpenters have their tools. Everyone's going to have their toolbox. Some carpenters like to do it with a hammer and nails. Some carpenters like to do it with a nail gun and power tools, right? But they're going to gravitate to what to do, but they know how to use them all, but they're going to gravitate to what they have and what they like. If you come into strength and conditioning, build a big toolbox. Do not pigeonhole yourself into, I want to be this, you know, I want to be the guy on staff that knows all about mobility. Great. That's good. But you better know how all that works within the other aspects of, of strength and conditioning, right? Or I want to be the speed guy. Great. How does that work 
in with everything else because at some point in time you're gonna have, if you're not in charge if you're got, you know if you got one of those big staffs and you got a guy on there that's responsible for the strength but you're responsible for the speed you better know how those two work together and know why you know where there's going to be a conflict and how they go together and stuff so build that you know build that toolbox out when i started and you know I, again this was you know a long time ago I went, you know, the big thing back when I started was the high intensity training, right? The guys that were on machines and they, they were doing sets to failure. I went and learned from as many of those guys as I possibly could by trade. You know, I was a thrower and a football player. So I, I had some Olympic lifting backgrounds and I, you know, I had the, you know, the squat and the bench and, you know, that's what I was trained on. But I also went, you know, I went to those guys too, to learn from them so that, I, hey, if I needed something to come along the way, I had that tool in my toolbox, you know, and I want and I want the guys that come and work through here to understand that this is a big it's a big puzzle out there. And you got to know, don't be a subject matter expert in one thing. You better be able to know how to take a little bit of everything and put it together so that when that when that one problem comes to you that maybe that one athlete that has that one thing that oh hey you know what I can I can take you over here and we can do this to solve to help you get to where you want to go it's such an interesting piece because as a younger coach I've come up and a lot of people have talked about specializing and just having one thing that you're really good at right uh and and then that can help you stand out and they you know they call it like uh niching down or whatever right um and, and you know I, I remember like okay what would my niche be like I gotta think about it and I'm like well, I have a sports psych degree, you know, and then I'm like, but I don't really, you know, I'm not like a sports right. psych, psychologist, you know. Right. Um, and so it's interesting that you bring up that process because it's something I've been hard on myself in the past for not doing that, right, and and not right. being a specific, an expert in specific areas. But exactly like you mentioned, you know, I work with women's golf here as well, and our women's golf coach wants me to do CrossFit workouts. Like that's that's all she wants, you know. And so I, I have been interested, and I've tried to learn about a bunch of different areas. And not to say I'm this amazing coach who's done it all, right? But uh, to do CrossFit and and just be willing to listen and understand their concepts. Now I immediately right. have a bunch of CrossFit workouts that we can give the girls, but also combined with the general strength and conditioning principles that we all know and love. Right. Right. And, you know, and I think you know, to my, for me, being able to come up kind of through the ranks, you know, and, and I've coached I've coached a lot of different sports, you know. And so, you know, having to work with volleyball, working with with baseball, you, you know, OK, overhead, overhead mechanics. Right now I'm looking at I'm looking at the shoulder complex. I'm looking at, you know, generating power through the torso and being able for it to come out. You know, now I'm now I'm only working with football. But, hey, you know, I've taken things that I've learned over through the years. Now I can apply it to quarterbacks, right? You know, I can reverse engineer it and apply it to our kickers because, I mean, it's a little bit similar. It's, a little, it's different, but it's a little bit similar. It's, you know, you're still generating power through the through the torso and through the through the core and then having it come out another way. And so every once in a while, you know, I'll, I'll make suggestions to, to those guys on, on things on the field. But, um, but you know, I think being just – having that knowledge and, and being able to see things um, through a wide lens and being able to, like I said, gr grab a tool that you might need just for that special occasion. You know? No, you, you and also, you just never know when it's going to come up, you know, right. and, and I've, I've just noticed that even in my short time of training conditioning is, you know, it, there's, there's certain times where things pop up out of absolutely nowhere. You might get asked to, random question from one of the athletes and it's good to be able to kind of produce information for them as long as you know what you're talking about within that area because I one time in my career also kind of tried to just talk out of my ass a little bit it didn't really work <laughs> out too well <laughs> well you know changing from interns to developing your staff you know what are the key things that you look for in your staff members is it that same passion piece that you mentioned or 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 is it that wide variety of toolbox or are there some other things that you look for uh, you know our first thing I, I, is the passion you know uh is the passion are, are they 
are they willing to, you know, do they really want to work with the athlete, you know? And then from there, you know, having a, you know, having a little bit different toolbox, right? Everybody's got different experiences and finding the right experiences to put together. Um, because, you know, we talked about it at the beginning of me being a voice for the head football coach. Well, they need to be a voice for our culture in the weight room. So, you know, even though there may not be training now here, here at New Mexico State, most of our guys all help with football, but then they all have their other sports. Well, you know, the things that that I believe in, I hope transcends just the football team and it gets carried through them into their teams and how and how they work with their guys and and, and their you know their athletes and and what comes out of out of that work as as well just out just not from sets and reps and exercises but you know this is the culture that we bring this is what we believe in in the weight room when you step in here you know this is what it this is what it means and we have a sign in the that i had put up when i walked in here effort attitude and toughness right that we're going to be about effort attitude and toughness and can that can make can my staff carry that through their athletes even though they're not football you know absolutely it, well i mean those things permeate they stay around right because uh, right. i'll never forget when i was with craig fitzgerald you remember we had team rules uh and you know certain coaches on the sports staff would kind of just let those things slide right so like hats jewelry you know those weren't allowed within the facility and i'll never forget uh, luckily it wasn't me who asked the question uh but i was thinking in my head somebody else just spoke up but you know if they're allowed to do it kind of outside of the weight room why do we never let it happen within the weight room uh, and I remember he described it as SEAL Team Six. You know, he's like, "This is our team is always going to be. If you're part of my strength and conditioning staff, you're always going to be the one who upholds the standards. You're always going to be the one who upholds the rules. Because at the end of the day, like we made those rules for a reason. We have them in place for a reason. So uh, we'll never be a staff who just kind of bends or breaks on those. We have our principles, and we'll stick with those. And and that's something that has stuck with me throughout my entire career. Uh, you know, right. obviously now transitioning to basketball. It's not the same with football, um, it, but my process is always still going to be, if there are team rules, we're going to follow them. Um, and I follow myself as well, too, uh, in specific areas. And so, you know, uh, if we have to wear Nike gear, we'll wear Nike gear. I got, you know, I got called out for Under Armour shorts one time, never happened again, right? Uh, you right. Know, those things yeah. are important and, and, it's, and it stays for sure. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I think I, absolutely. And then it just, I think it, it helps build that character of the athletics department. You know, I mean, we are the room. We're the, you know, we're fortunate. We have one room, right? We're the, we're the one room where everybody goes, you know, we're going to see, we're going to see them all. You know, and so we can, we can touch and that's why I do what I do because you can touch as many individuals as you possibly can. And it's, you know, I don't, do I know all of our athletes? No, you know, but I, I know enough to, you know, I encourage them when they're in there and I'm going to say something to them if they're not holding the standard. And, and, and I, and, and I think they respect that, you know, I think they, they respect that. Hey, when we walk into this, you know, we're a separate building. When we walk into this building, that this is, that's the standard. The standard is what the standard is and we're going to be held to it. We uh, even had a micro example this morning where, uh, you know, one of my players walked in and, and kind of made like a joking uh, comment about, you know, not wanting to do a specific workout because it was going to be tough. And our director was in my office and he turned to him and he goes, I, I have no clue about that. You know, I have no clue what you're talking about that. Right. But um, on a staff, that's what's a you know, on the other side of being a coach as a part of that staff, that's something I truly appreciate because um, being a part of a unified philosophy Maybe if it isn't even the specific tools that you mentioned, but the general understanding and, and having those principles um, and sticking to those principles, I mean, for me, it brings a lot more joy uh, within the field and, and a lot of consistency that makes it really uh, fun for me to come into work every day and knowing that, you know, if I had to sub in for a lift uh, for our director, you know, we'd run it probably the same way. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.
Well, Coach, I, I mean, I've really, really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much for coming on. If anybody wants to reach out to you or uh, ask you any questions or kind of follow up on anything you mentioned, uh, what would be the best way to do that? Uh, probably hit me up on email. Um, you know, one one of my pet peeves, and this is just being a young, you know, young coach coming up through the ranks, is uh, I will hit you back within 24 hours. If you email me, I will email you. And you know, I mean, we, we, we messaged, we messaged each other and, and, and emails and, you know, I'm going to be back. Cause you know, I was that guy, right. I had a thousand questions. Yep. So I reached out to people and, you know, I lose a little bit of respect. If, if I ask somebody a question and they don't ever, and you know, and they don't ever answer it. Uh, yeah. So uh, my email, you know, they can hit me up on my email uh, I am on social media. I'm not a great social media guy. Uh, <laughs> matter of fact, I'm sitting here going, uh, what is my social media? <laughs> <laughs> like what, what is, what is my stuff? Uh, cause you know, our athletes are, Hey coach, I follow you on, you know, I follow you on Instagram and you don't follow me back. Yeah. I said, okay, yeah, I was on Instagram for five minutes this week. You know, yeah, I, just, <laughs> I don't care about that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm a, I'm a old, I'm old guy. You know, I, if, if I got free time, I'm, I'm not on my phone. You know, my, my cell phone is my phone. That's really what it, that's really what it is. Um, so, but yeah. That's excellent. You know, I, I, uh, I do have to tell our listeners too. I, I fumbled the ball on our uh, hitting you back because I told you I'd send you over the directions and instructions and everything. And then I emailed you this morning and I sent it all yeah. over. So that's my apologies for that. But uh, I totally understand. I, I appreciate you coming on. I mean, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.